spinning back to the open side. Kuro Mbete, off the ball here for Samu, who's quick. Pete Samu, looking for Kuro Mbete, back to Samu. Oh, that is wonderful. That is wild. That is amazing from the Wallabies. Hi there and welcome to Pick and Drive Rugby Podcast. We are the people's podcast, providing a platform for rugby lovers to come together and support the game that's played in heaven. Match reviews, play interviews, quality rugby chat that is consistent and positive. We do it all for you. Now I'm joined today by Harry from the Pick and, uh, not Pick and Drive, that's us, from the Draft Rugby Podcast. How are you, Harry? Good, mate. Today I am from the Pick and Drive Podcast, so you're technically we'll correct. You are. Pleasure to be here. We'll Thanks for having me. Are. Fantastic. And if, if you're not sure what you're listening to, this is our Fijian in Drua preview podcast. Now, we did release our interview with Mick Byrne earlier this week. So if you haven't listened to that, please do go back and listen to that because I'm sure that will be a little bit more uh, probably in accurate or just a little bit more access to what the Fijian team will bring this year than what we're going to sort of bring tonight. But we're going to do our best and we're going to get through it. Harry, you're the expert in the Fijian and Drua team. For tonight, so how, how does that sort of sit with you? How does how do you feel with that? <laughs> Man, it must be slim pickings. I like to think I know the uh, the squad and the players and what they're going to do. But as we found last year, you know, we made a lot of predictions. Some of them were right. Some of them were were way off. The uh, one thing I can do is just keep going back to the one player I called for all of last season who barely got a run, and uh, I won't give his name away yet. But I'll be saying it a lot, <laughs> I'm sure. So hopefully this year, as the captain of the squad. He actually gets a lot more time. That I guess that guarantees him at least a start. So like we'll see how that goes. Let's uh let's dive in. We'll start first on the 2022 season. So the inaugural season for the Fijian Indrua in Super Rugby Pacific. Now they did get two wins. They did beat the Rebels, well, the Melbourne Rebels and Moana Pacifica, but they did also suffer 12 losses. Um, some of the key games for them over the season. So that first victory over the Rebels was their first victory in Super Rugby Pacific history. Very exciting for the team. Uh, What were your thoughts around overall that game, but then just their performance in 2022? Well, I think in that game, their first win, I think that was round three or four from from memory. And it was 34 to 19. They were quite dominant. And I don't think any of us saw it coming. We all expect they might go close for the season if they're lucky, snag one at the end. So it came out of nowhere and it probably showed the danger that they have in their side to actually attack and put points on the board. And I guess it probably kick-started fans' love affair with the side that weren't already in it like you and I from day dot, just purely because we had a Fiji inside in the competition. It was uh, it was a, it was a fast-paced game and it was one where we got introduced to a lot of the stars in their back line in particular. And um, that second game or that second victory for them or their key game in 2022 was, uh, it it was unfortunately a loss. It was their last game of the season for 2022 against the Chiefs in the Toka. But that was an incredible game to watch. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen the highlights, do go back because there's one mo. there's about six or seven minutes towards the end of the game where the Indrua team were down by three tries and they scored three tries in the space of like four, five, six minutes and uh, really put the Chiefs under a lot of pressure and were coming home really, really hot. So that was another key performance by them in that 2022 season. Another reason why that was a key game for them, it was the first time they played in Latoka. It was the second game being played in Fiji for the Indrua in 2022. They do have all of their home games in 2023 being played in Fiji. Harry, how do you feel like that's going to change the way that they, first of all, prepare but do you think it'll give them a bit of an extra edge in 2023 being able to play at home? Honestly, I think it's going to be huge. If you look at the back end of that season, it looked like the team was starting to get a bit tired. They had a big, heavy loss to the Hurricanes. They fought well against the Highlanders. Then they had another huge loss. I think it was 61-3 to against the Crusaders leading into that Chiefs match. And what we saw in that match was the Chiefs blew them away, blew them out of the water for the first two-thirds, three-quarters of the game. And then they just had this never-say-die attitude that we just didn't think they had left in the tank. And it's so obvious the passion that the Fijian players have to play in front of their fans and play for their country, it's it's going to make a gigantic difference. I think 
the biggest thing for them, we know they can put points on teams. It's how solid they can be in defence and how long they can be focused and apply themselves to the level that's required in Super Rugby. And I, I think that's going to be an absolute game changer for them. I'm not. I uh, I think it's huge, absolutely huge. And there was one play in that game particularly. I, I can't remember the exact minutes now. It has been a been a little while since we saw that game, but there was a, a kickoff from a restart and one of the Fijian players took the, I think he tried to keep the ball in from letting it go out on the full, ended up sort of batting the ball in and the Chiefs ran through and scored a pretty easy try, which in in the way that the game ended up playing out was quite pivotal because it meant the Chiefs were able to hang on and get the victory. Now that's one thing that I guess we did see a few times in 2022, just some of the, uh, I, I guess you could call it inexperience of the players who hadn't quite played at this level, who were up against teams that were putting on a lot of pressure, oftentimes made the wrong decision, tried to keep that Fiji and flair alive, keep the ball alive and keep the ball in play when sometimes you just need to think about let's actually go to the line out there and not give away seven points because that that ends up costing the game. So we hopefully will see a little bit more of a um, consistent approach in 2023 and, and a little bit more level-headed from some of the players. Yeah, I do remember watching the the Waratahs play them in round one in New South Wales, going to the game, and the end score was 40 to 10. The game didn't feel anywhere near that one-sided, but the biggest takeaway from me was constantly they were 10, 15 metres from their own line. They were throwing off loads and trying to score, and it was just like they didn't quite understand that there needs to be some level of risk mitigation at this level of, of footy, and that's something that they worked out as the season went on. As you said, they, they weren't perfect. They still made mistakes late in the game, in the in, late in the season. But uh, I think under Mick Byrne, it's just going to get better and better. And, yeah, there's definitely a bright future ahead and, and a lot to expect from them this year. Now, if we shift across to their best performances of the 2022 season, obviously that game in Latoka where they did run the Chiefs down and were very close to snatching a victory late um, is one of the highlights. But the other highlight for me personally is that victory over Moana Pacifica. Now, this has, as a game, this had a lot of uh, emotion to it. The first time that the two new teams in Super Rugby Pacific were playing against each other. It was unfortunate. It had to be played in Sydney due to COVID. Good for us as as Sydney-based fans because we were able to go and, and get a, a double header with that game in the Waratahs later that evening. But it would have been great to see this game being played somewhere in the Pacific Islands. But the, what we saw in this game was Fiji were really dominant and they were dominant through playing Fiji and rugby. Uh, they scored, I think, three intercept tries. They... Just every time Moana Pacific had dropped the ball, they picked it up, they ran full field. Like this was the type of rugby that you expect when you think of Fiji. You think of that free-flowing, ball constantly moving, cutout passes, hectic sort of gameplay. It's It was pretty cool to see the first episode of what is no doubt going to be a giant rivalry between two teams for the future. And it's, it's so exciting. I actually can't wait to watch that game. It's one of those ones that you circle in your calendar and you know you're going to put time aside or whatever, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, because it's just two teams that just will never die wondering, will always throw the ball around. And there's just going to be so much passion and it means so much to the two sides. It's going to be a big, big rivalry. As you said, the, the uh, Andrua got up last time by a handy margin, but I think it's going to be a lot closer. Obviously, Moana Pacifica had such a challenging draw last year as they were just absolutely ripped apart by COVID in the first half of the season. It's going to be a lot harder for the Indrua to get it over them this year. It, uh, if we shift across now to the takeaways from the 2022 season, we we this time last year, we were sort of sitting here and thinking, how what will these two teams, Moana Pacifica and the Fijian Indrua, bring to Super Rugby? One thing that we can take away and we can say confidently that both teams were competitive. Yes, there were a few blowout scores. I think from memory there was a 56 to 10 uh, beat by the Crusaders for the Indrua. But there was also some games where it came down to the final whistle. They pushed teams. They were never, uh, you could never sort of write them off. They always had the, you going into games throughout 2022, you always had the thought in the back of your head that this Fijian team could click tonight. And if they do, they're going to cause some massive upsets. That's one thing that at, at times it came and there were games where they played really well and other games where that cohesive element wasn't quite there and they didn't put in such a good performance. Again, we can attribute that to the travel factor, the first time that some of these players have been traveling so much within one season. COVID, um, so many different impacts on the squad. They were away from home for a large chunk of 2022. 
So I think looking forward 2023, again, they're going to build on that base they built in 2022. And it, they they can on their day beat any team. I'm confident they can beat any team in Super Rugby Pacific this year. Um, what were your thoughts around just their competitiveness and that element? Well, I think they surprised everyone with how good they were. I thought with... I thought they were going to really, really struggle at set piece time. I thought they were going to make way too many mistakes and they were obviously a hell of a lot more competitive than we maybe thought they would be. Um, should have been a bit of a sign when they towed us up in the NRC to win the competition that maybe they were going to go all right. But nevertheless, overconfident Australian in the preseason always. Um, I think, yeah, they, they exceeded expectation. And as you said, they had so many challenges that it just it bodes so well for 2023. And the, the more we talk about it, the more I think this season is going to be so close. Every team is getting stronger. The Indrua have an opportunity to really push for a top eight spot. And it's uh, it's it's going to be about, you know, how well did they take the learnings for where to play their rugby is the biggest thing for me. Well, let's shift across now to 2023. Let's look at this season that is coming and we'll start with the squad. So I'll, um, I'll attempt to get these names right. You might need to jump in and help my pronunciation where I do get it wrong, but we'll look first at the forwards. So in the props, we have Masaki Doge. Um, is that correct? I think it'd be Donge. N- Donge. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to run through this? I think you might be a little bit. Oh, you're going to, you're going to make it. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a crack at it. Uh, Haredi <laughs> Hatet, uh, Jonah Koraduadua, Timothy Salvoli, Samuela Tawaki, Meli Tuni, Amosi Takiri, and Kaliopasi, Yului Lakepa. That's all the props. Fantastic. In the I'll hooker, run through the hookers and see how we yep. go here. So in the hookers, we've got uh, Mesalame Dalakoto, Tavita Ikenvere, and Zuriel Togia Tama. Yeah, that's right. And, and all there from last season as well. So the same core group for the hookers. In the locks, you got Chris Manimbi, Isoa Nasilasila, Ratu Ratui Solia, and Soro Vakatini Tui Fagalele, who are again same group from last year. Fantastic. You did that really well. Why don't you run through the back row as well? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. There's a few guys here. I haven't seen the names as many uh, as much as the other guys, but uh, a new new player of the squad, I think, Alaya Kanakavaita. Uh, Te Ahiwaru Thoriki and Deveta. Ratu Meli Deranalangi, who is, of course, the captain for this year and known as the White Shark, who I uh, I mentioned I'll be saying his name a little bit, and I will. Vilive uh, <laughs> Miramira, Raikabula Moe Moe Donu, Rusiati Nasove, Kidioni Salawa, and Joseva Tamani. Fantastic. Now... Are there any names here that really jump off the page to you? Anyone that you can highlight that's going to have a big impact in the forward pack for the Drua in 2023? Well, I think I've made it pretty clear. I'm going to talk about the White Shark, Meli Durenalangi. Um, the number eight, he, he's a sevens player from last year that we actually thought he was going to be the starting eight all the way through until Nangusa obviously got named as the captain. Um, he's 24 years old, 195 centimetres tall, 98 kilos. So he's a big, tall player. I remember in the he made his debut in the sevens in 2019 and took out the rookie of the year for the entire competition. And then I think he was the captain through when they won uh, Olympic gold, I think, as well. So he's just uh, he's just an absolute weapon. He's not only big and fast, but he has a, a massive, massive offload as well. So for those players, they're going to be doing, I guess, a little bit of the maybe not tight work, but in around the edges, throwing the ball to try and give some space to their electric outside backs. I think he's going to be absolutely massive. And I can't wait for him to be the starting number eight for, you know, the the vast majority of the season now that Nungusa has obviously moved on. Yep. Um, other than that, I think that there's, I don't know if he's going to get as many runs, but Threkin Deveta is a guy, another player that I just really want to see more of. He plays a little bit of lock and a little bit of six. He's come through the pathways in the Mitre 10 Cup over in New Zealand. He's just a gigantic unit. If anything, I think he was probably carrying an extra 15 kgs last season. <laughs> so I'm hoping he's trimmed down a little bit because there is an opportunity around that five and six jersey for this Fijian and Drua team. And I'm really hopeful that he can actually try and cement himself in a spot there because he's just such a damaging player as well. I really hope we see a lot of him. 
Fantastic. Let's uh let's dive now into the the backs and we'll keep going with our squad for 2023. Um so the scrum halves we have uh Simeone Crivoli, Frank Lamani, which is a big signing. Technically he's an, an in this year, but he did sign with the Indrua for the last maybe four or five games um last year in 2022. So he did feature for them a little bit last year, but he's officially joining them for 2023, which is awesome. Um we then also to finish off the scrum halves have Penny Matawula. Yeah, they uh, th- three class halfbacks, to be honest. All three of them have played for Fiji and they all played very, very well last year. So the, in reality, you could start any of them. They're all, all going to look class in Super Rugby. I think Frank Lamani is obviously the name that sticks out there. He's just, the you know, the first choice player for Fiji. He's played over in Australia before. We've seen him firsthand just how electric he is. He's fantastic, fantastic player and someone I really love watching and I hope he gets a lot of minutes this year. In the fly halves, you've got Caleb Munts and Teddy Teller. So, again, the two main names out of last year. I think they've lost um, – who was the uh, – Baden Kerr was the other fly yeah. half that they started the year with last year, but obviously he fell out of favour. So, after the first couple of rounds, we didn't really see much of him. I expect Teddy Teller to steer the ship again. Um, Caleb Munts, exciting young player. I, I love his short kicking game. He's, he's very exciting and seems to be able to create a lot with it. But I think just defensively, he just wasn't up to it last year and probably still has a little bit to learn. So I think you'll probably see Frank Lamani and Teddy Teller still going to run. All right. Now we'll move to the centres. So we've got, um, and I'm not sure if this is an I or an L, but uh, Losefo uh, Osefo Marcy, Michael Naito Kani, Kilioni Nasoko, and Absalomi Vota. Yeah, and I mean, Apostolomi Vodo is the name that will stand out as an absolute a fire player or an absolute electric player for the outside centre position last year. He was actually joined by one of the outside backs, uh, Calavetti Revalval, for most of the scene, this season, sorry, who was playing in the 12 jersey. So I do think that those two will probably just continue on. They were definitely the first choice last year. Both had absolute blinders of a season, and I think they really established themselves. But the other name that I'm looking at is ISFO Masi. He's, uh, he's straight out of the seventh circuit. He played a couple of years there, and he's meant to be very, very exciting for them. So I think he can play in the centres. He can also play in the outside backs. Uh, if there's someone that's going to kind of come through, if there's a give, if they're given a bit of an opportunity, I think it's him. Cool. Uh, run us through the outside backs to finish off the squad for 2023. We've got Calavetti, Revalval, Celestino, Ravidomata, Benaya Hambossi, the boss man, Iliasa <laughs> Joasesi, Kidiani Talinga, and Tuitraki Samosovodre. Fantastic. Um, we'll I'm, keep going into yep. our uh, ins and outs. So the players that we've signed or the, the Indra have signed for 2023, we do have coming in Masaki Doje, uh, Emosi Takiri, Elia uh, I'm going to butcher this, okay, so Vada. sorry about that. But what was it? I think it's Kanakavara. Fantastic. Michael uh, Naitakani, Frank Lamani, and Iliese Droasi. Yeah, so I think the names that people will know is uh, Droasesi, obviously, out of the Reds. I, I really – the story was just – fascinating last year the start of the season he had I think a pretty good 2021 2022 rolls around and pre-season starts and Joe says there's nowhere to be found after the season gets a month or two in I remember the articles came out that he was just hanging out in Fiji just decided not to come come back for the season (laughs) so I think um, Brad Thorne had contacted him and tried to get him back in but he just didn't really want to play for the Reds for whatever reason you know we can obviously speculate but we shouldn't Um, signed late with the Andrua and had a couple of runs in the back end of the season. He's a big unit, exciting player. But uh, there, there's a few other names there. Amosi Takiri is one of the Rebels young props who's uh, – he's a Fijian. The, the Rebels had picked him up and brought him across, so good to see him going home. Masaki Donge, um, he has been playing over in Europe. I think he's been playing since 2021 or something like that. He's got a few caps for Fiji. Uh, and he's uh, he was playing for one of the Welsh sides last year, so he's meant to come back as a as a player with a fair bit of experience that should really, I guess, increase the depth as for their loose head props. And then uh, Kanaka Vata is one of the big loose forwards out of the sevens program. Again, should be very very exciting. So that's one of the the things about this Indrua team that's so exciting is they've got both the Fijian national team to to draw on 
but also the sevens team and we know what they can do. So um, what's really exciting for them this year and, and just remind me, did Droa Sese, did he play for Fiji in um, the Pacific Nations Cup last year? Um, that's a great question, and I'm not 100% not sure. Not too but sure. I'll have a look. Well, let's just say we'll, we'll put him in. Uh, so Frank Lamani and Droa Sese, uh, at least those two and some of the other guys as well, uh, bringing in international character players too. He, uh, he did not. He, I remember potentially that he was around the squad or in, even if he didn't play, I, I think he was training with them or something. So let's, let's say maybe it's some thinking that he was playing with the, or training with the drawer at the end of last year. Um, we'll run through as well, the players that left. Uh, so they're outs for this year. So we had Namani Nagusa, which was their former captain. He has left. Um, Baden Kerr as well. We mentioned previously, he's gone. Uh, Jonah Matasiwa. Leone Nawai, uh, Viliame Rorasea, Onisi Ratave, Kitioni Ratu, and Manasa Sualo. So out of the players that they've lost, who do you think is going to be the biggest impact and the biggest sort of shoes to fill in 2023? Namani Nangusa, hands down, was their, their fearless leader. Their captain was exceptional last year, and I think he's going to be the big one to try and replace. As I said, the White Sharks, a similar kind of player, maybe a little bit more athletic and a few years younger. So I think they have the ability to do that. Uh, and then Anissi Ratave is another one. He's He was one of those big barreling wingers, lightning fast, very hard to put down. So I think Droa Sese is probably going to be the player tasked with trying to replicate what he was doing. Not a like-for-like -like player per se, a lot taller Droa Sese, but um, Ratave was just absolutely magnificent to watch. So Interested to see what happens there. And then the, the other names that stick out for me, Rorosia, um, probably not a household name, but I think he played a fair bit in the locks for them. And considering that they do have quite an inexperienced locks in their side, I think he was quite an important cog. So I think it'll be really hard for them to uh, to just slide someone in as a straight replacement. And then finally, Manasa Salo. Uh, it was a very, very good loose head for them last year. And it's going to give a lot of opportunity to uh, Heureti Hatet. Um, who who did play and did start a fair few games last year, but um, it, I think a lot more is going to fall on his shoulders and probably the reason they brought in Dongek to try and uh, replace him as well. Fantastic. Now, if we shift across into the most valuable players who we think are going to have big impacts for the Drua in 2023, um, who do you think out of these four players, we've highlighted four, so we've got uh, Meli, Deralangi, Vinaya Habossi, uh, Calavetti, Ravavau, and Frank Lamani. Who who are you highlighting as probably the biggest impact player out of these four? I'm going to steal yours if you ask me that. Um, look, <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. All right. Vinaya Hambossi, the boss man. Come on. The guy's <laughs> worth like 10 points a game, isn't he? He's just absolutely yeah. lightning. And he did that coming back from a dodgy hip. So surely he's only getting faster this year. I think he's probably going to be running around. If they could give him the ball from fly half, he'll run around the opposition wing and score from 80 out. That's how good he is. So the boss man, if he gets space, he's just absolutely lightning, hard to tackle in contact as well. If his decision-making is a little bit better, so he gives away a few less turnovers, he could be the most damaging winger in the competition. He's that good. Um, I'll go with my impact player, Frank Lamani, and we think we saw that in 2022. The few games that he did play and he was, he did sign late and he only, he came off the bench a few times, but the impact that he brought, um, he's just such a crisp passer. He, he has the ability to play wing. He could also potentially play fly half if really needed. So he's such a utility player in that back line and he really sh lifted that team when he came on in 2022. So I'm really keen to see what he can bring in 2023. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the other one for me was Calavetti Revalvo. So the, the combination that he had with Vota was just instrumental with unlocking their outside backs, but also he was a game breaker in his own as well. So I, I think the growing combination they have in their back line with him in that all important 12 jersey will be massive for the side and how well they can gel. And Meli Deralungi, he's the white shark. So why don't you finish off talking about him? El, El Capitan, mate, he's going to lead the ship. As you said, he should be getting some big minutes, just lightning fast, throws an offload. I've said it a few times now. I just think he's up for a big, big year. I was surprised we didn't get to see as much of him last year, despite Nungusa being available. I thought they would have shifted him somewhere else. And he maybe was a little bit gun shy when he started in Super Rugby, but this will be his year. He'll be an all-class back rower in the competition, I would think. 
Yeah, and last year was also Nagusa. Like he picked up a few injuries and he was he missed a fair bit of time in that season. So that allowed some of the other players to get a few minutes, and I think that's just going to help them when it gets into twenty twenty three and they can sort of hit the ground running. Um, he is the captain, as you mentioned, so that guarantees him at least a start and hopefully some big minutes. So we'll see how um, how he goes in in twenty twenty three. Now we will start to wrap things up and we'll sort of talk about how we think the Drua are going to go in twenty twenty three. So. One of the strengths that we've come to expect from any Fijian side is their counter-attack. So why don't you talk a little bit around how they can utilize their counter-attack to really damage some teams in Super Rugby? Yeah, look, I, I think the biggest thing for them is going to be trying to force teams to kick to them. Obviously, they have absolutely electric outside backs, the the likes of Talinga, Joe Assese, Humbossi. They're, they're not a team that's going to put your Teddy Teller into fifth and into the backfield to try and kick back, but uh, they've just got so much firepower that if they're giving given any resemblance of a fractured line, obviously they've been growing up playing sevens all their life. They're used to taking that space, and then they're so hard to put down in contact that they generally get their arms free and can put someone through space as well. So, uh, you know, they're up there with the Crusaders as the best in the competition for that kind of play, and uh, I, I think it's something that's going to be head and shoulders above, particularly their Australian counterparts. And that's one thing as well. Like the back line, there's talent from sort of 9 to 15. Anyone has the ability in this back line to score points, and, and that's what makes them so difficult to defend against, that you can't give them half a metre because if you do, they're around you and they're so quick and fast away. So it'll be interesting to see this year how they do um utilize that that has one that is one thing that they need to focus on is is when the right like the timing when the right time to throw the offload when to keep the ball alive but also to keep it in in tight and to to do a few pick and drives we saw in 2022 whilst they had the ability and the the i guess um fluidity to keep the ball alive at times it probably wasn't always on and they sometimes push their hand a little bit too far by doing that so um, if they can learn, take those learnings from 2022 and apply them to 2023, um, they'll hit the ground running and will be really exciting to see. They're, they're one of the most exciting teams in all of Super Rugby to watch when they're, when they're getting things right. If we yeah, look really, at some of the weaknesses, um, oh, you've got anything else? I was just going to say, in regards to the strength of their back line, I think the biggest thing is having that established pair of Lamani and Teller just running the running the ship, steering the ship. Hopefully that is the difference in terms of their decision-making, using their forwards effectively, when to kick the ball, when to throw it out wide. I expect if they can make that little shift, as well as having another year under their belt, that the, the uh, decision-making should be a lot better and they'll get the most out of that back line. They could get better than last season, which is just scary. And if we now look across to some of the weaknesses that we they may encounter in 2023, well, what what do you where can we highlight an area that they may struggle? Well, I, I mentioned the locks, um, particularly just the fact that there's not a lot of older players. They do have Tui Fagalele, who I think's 29 this year. Um, but otherwise, really, it's like Nasilla Silla, it's uh Chris Manimbi, it, it's those players that are in their early 20s that haven't played a lot of professional footy who they're really up against some world-class second rowers across the entire competition. You know, we talked about how good the counter-attack is as a strength for Fiji and Andrua. Well, it's pretty obvious how you're going to try and counter that, isn't it? You're just going to try and kick the ball out and make them throw into their own line out. And hopefully you'll disrupt their set piece enough that you can completely negate their, their biggest strength. So I think that the uh, the growth of Nasilla Silla will be huge. They really tried to build him last year. You know, he played a lot of international footy as well. And obviously they see him as the long-term future in that position for them at the moment. So hopefully they can continue to develop him and he can be the real linchpin. I think just in general, their set piece is one area that they're not as dominant in that area. And that's that's fine. That's Fijian rugby. They, they're they not known for uh, having a, a strong scrum or an efficient line out, they put big hits on in defense and they keep the ball alive in attack. They they can run teams ragged, but when it does come to the set piece, they do struggle a little bit. We look back at 2022, that Reds game particularly jumps to mind where they were finishing strong, like we saw in the Toka against the Chiefs as well. Uh, it came down to a line out. I think it was their, even their throw on the Reds five meter and uh, they had... Um, Oh, the names escape me. What's the Fijian second row off from the from Queensland? Uh, from Queensland. 
Yeah, oh, sorry, oh, you're, you're talking about the, the Red Squad. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, great question. Do you question. remember his name, Isla? <laughs> no, not under the bump. <laughs> No, pass. <laughs> okay, that's fine. No, all good. But um, the, the Fijian, he's Fijian. Uh, he is in Sarah Australia Uru. now. Uru. Uru, that's it. Yeah, Sarah Uru, that's it. Um, who called on his Fijian heritage and was able to actually get the call for the lineout. So he was able to get up in front of the second row, steal the ball, get a famous victory for the Queensland Reds. Now, that's one area that I think we will potentially see again, teams being able to, to get some easy ball back off the Indra, they can work on that, but it is one area where you can focus on them. You can, their scrum again in 2022 wasn't as strong as it could have been, pushed off a fair bit of their own ball. Um, we've also got an area, a, a point here on depth in the front row. Is that one area that you think a few injuries could potentially uh, start to question their depth in player availability? Yeah, well, I, I just think that it was already a bit of a weakness for them. And then they lost Manasa Salo last year. It means that the loose head, really, they've got head tet. And then hopefully Donga is up to super rugby standards. You know, they say he's experienced and he is, but I'm just not sure that he's going to be to the level to really make a big difference there. So that's a real big question mark. And below them in the loose head side, they're down to their development squad, really. They've got a, a young player in their development squad, uh, Levi Natabe, who they're trying to fast track into their Fijian setup, I believe, as well, who looks like a bit of a prospect, but he's very, very young. So there's not a lot of options there for them. And on the tight head side, they've got Ilui Lekepa, who, again, a player I really like watching, and they've got Tawak here behind him. So maybe a little bit of a uh, more solid second choice, more established at this level. But even then, you've got Hatep and your Louis Lekepa as your first choices. In the last game of the year, they conceded a five-metre pushover scrum try against the Chiefs, who, you know, they have a solid scrum, but they definitely don't have the best scrum in the competition. So if yeah. that's your best players, I, I think it's a big ask for them to be getting parity week to week, and uh, that's going to be a real challenge for them. So if we look at 2023 as a whole for the Indra, where do you see them finishing? If you had to give a number of how many wins you think they can get, where where are you landing? Yeah, I reckon four or five. I think um, last year they got over um, um, Moana Pacifica. I think this yep. year they'll push the Western Force and Rebels and take at least one win off those two sides as well. I dare say they'll get two wins over one of them. And then... I say four or five because I just think they'll upset someone that they shouldn't. It'll be the Highlanders or the Chiefs or the Waratahs or the Reds, I would think. They're just going to get a win over one of those sides where it just shouldn't happen, but they're just so exciting they managed to pull it out on the day. Yeah, and I, I think I, I, I sit about that same number as well, four or five, but I think some of the other losses that they will get will be tight, like we saw in 2022. The squad will take the learnings from that season. They will have more game time. They have a full season of prep now. They have um, got a fancy new uh, strength and conditioning set up in Fiji for this team. So they are going to hit the ground running at the start of the season. So they there's really no excuses for them um, around their preparation this year, which is great for them and the ability that they can um, have an, a good early impact on the season. Uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty confident they will be able to push both the Rebels and the, Red, uh, the, Rebels and the Force, like you said, um, should beat both of them uh, again. And I think a few extra close calls as well. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do beat one of those teams or two of those teams, like you said, um, that some of those New Zealand teams playing in Fiji too, all of their home games. We saw last year, they only got two games there, but both of them were sellouts. There were people in trees outside. It was re reminiscent of the NRC grand final a few years back where there were blokes falling out of trees outside the stadium because they couldn't get in. The, the love of rugby in Fiji is huge. And I think when the, when the nation can get behind this Fijian team, um, they're going to do massive, massive things. And I think uh, in, in terms of rankings, I haven't ranked ninth above Rebels Force and Pacifica, but I, they play the Reds in the last round of the season. So I think that the Reds will probably be seventh or eighth around that time. And I think that's going to be a huge opportunity, a huge game where Fiji and Nduru's final hopes are going to be really on the line in that match. And, you know, that, that'll be an absolute nail-biting finish, I would think. Yeah, it's it's going to be really great to see how they can 
um, adapt their gameplay to all the different teams they've played too. Like 2022, they only got to play some of the teams once. And so coming up against them a second or third time uh, early on in this season, they will take those learnings and they will have different approaches to how they can play their rugby. So it will be interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing what impact they can have um, this year. That kind of brings us to the end of our preview for the Fijian Indrua for 2023. Thanks for joining me, Harry. Is there anything else you wanted to say about the Indrua? Anything that really excites you and that you're most, is there a matchup that you're really looking forward to in the 2023 calendar? It's it's absolutely got to be Fijian Andrua versus Moana Pacifica. That is one that I will be making sure I'm home for. Every single game, to be honest with you, Andrua, is an absolute joy to watch. I reckon I saw every single one of their matches last season live. Just no matter what, I put my time aside because I knew that it was going to be attacking footy, which is obviously the most exciting kind of footy to watch. So every single week, sit down. If You know, yeah, I, I go for the Tars, so do you. Other than that, they're probably my second Guilty. team I'm going to tune in for. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, look, really looking forward. Do you have the draw up in front of you at all? Do you know whether that Moana game is played as a home game? Is it being in, played in Fiji or is it as a Moana Pacifica home game? Uh, round one, I believe it's Moana Pacifica uh, in Mount Smart Stadium, which is... Okay. Auckland. That's in Auckland. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm not. I'm not sure if they play them a second time. I'll. I'll have a quick little look. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's. Um, that pretty much brings us to the end of the podcast. So thanks everyone for joining us tonight, uh, this evening, this morning, whenever you're listening. Um, if you are listening to the podcast, we are live on YouTube as well. So do um, give us a follow or a like or a share or tune into YouTube, and you can watch us as well as we has listened to us. So thank you for your support in so far this season. Uh, We'll be back next week with our preview for the Western Force. Um, Thanks again for joining me, Harry. No worries, mate. Thanks very much for having me. And uh, round 14, Fiji and Andrua host Moana Pacifica in Fiji. Fantastic. So we've got two, we've got to double up next year. So Andrua play Moana twice. So that's going to be fantastic. Put that in your calendars, both of those games. um, And yeah, get behind the in drawer in 2023. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.